We are now at the San Javier Mission. Out front, we're going to have dinner, I think. With the ladies cooking their native dishes. She told two different newspaper reporters that her grandfather, Juan Santa Cruz, who I showed you the genealogy last night, was an apprentice. And he helped paint these paintings here. Now, the master artist was 29 of them and came and did the sculpturing. That's not wood, that's stone. They sculpted out of stone. And they did the painting, and as an apprentice, he got to help paint all of this. So, Nada Nasha came here for her 15th, 50th wedding anniversary. She and Sam came. Right there, by a Catholic priest. On the 50th? On the 50th wedding anniversary. 
and on the 25th minute anniversary, she went back to the Hughes house there in Tucson and said, the paintings have all, have all become a little bit uh, dimmer than when I was here 50 years ago, because my grandfather helped paint these. Okay? So you're looking at the work of master artisans, 29 of them in about 1797. Okay? And these are the So one helped them paint these. After they left and went back to Mexico City, then according to Adonisha, got permission, that door right there, that door right there, goes into the sacristy where the priest does the sacrament, gets the sacrament ready, and he will allow us to go in. If we go around the back way, he'll meet me at the back gate and let us in. We can go to see that. Okay, that we know he painted this for sure. He helped paint this. We think that he, we're pretty sure that he painted that one in there by himself after the artisans left. And this pretty one up here in the choir loft. This is the interior courtyard. Church was very much aware that the Anglos were in 
charge of the economy of this whole area. And so they compromised and said, yes, you're welcome to be married in the main, in the main cathedral, and not one of the two ants on there. Right now, the little, the little prairies with the candles, according to the Father Ken McCarthy, McCarthy, I showed you his picture. Right here, remember, standing right here, mm -hmm. not yesterday, in front of this mural? Oh, yeah. According to him, what they did was they compromised, and they allowed them to be married in the main chapel, okay? But the other side of the coin was, was she had to wear black, because she was marrying a non a non Catholic. But for Adam Asher, that was fine, because many Spaniards got married in black because marriage was as solemn as as, as any ordinance that, that there is, and even compared it with with the final Catholic rite of death. Okay, remember in, in Catholicism, if you die and you've not been you've not been blessed on your deathbed. And if you're a child, you go to limbo. And if you're an adult, then you go to a place called Hades. And so death is very serious to Catholics. And so the Catholics in Spain compared that with marriage. And all of their ordinances were very, very serious. So the compromise that they made, that man she had to wear black. And she we have her description, in her words, of her Spanish outfit in black. Okay? But they were made in that, in that main cathedral. She then, when they got back to the Sam Hughes house that we were at yesterday, she, of course she was being interviewed, she told the, the newspaper reporter, she said, I was a little disappointed because when my grandfather painted the paintings out there in the main chapel, that they were very bright. And she said they dimmed with time. Okay? And so what she had done was, remember Juan Santa Cruz, his father was Modesto Olario, and we just came from Tubac and Tumacocari, where they raised their family and had their kids baptized. Juan Santa Cruz, who painted this and who painted out there to help the artisans, okay, he was baptized at Tumacocari. I have the record, the original Catholic record from Paul McCarty. So that's where he was baptized. Pretty cool stuff. <laughs> 200 years ago. Okay, so what you have to know then is he helped the artisans out there as, as an apprentice. So much of the painting out there he helped to do. But you know, the outlines of the saints and all that kind of stuff was done by the original artist. And Nasha clarified that. She said, in another newspaper article I have, she said that her, that her grandfather had helped to paint the, 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 the faces and the images of the saints. So he did more than just do border type stuff out there. She said that he actually helped paint the saints that are on those murals and on the walls out there. That much we know. He helped paint those. Then we, we asked, well, did he, did he help also paint the, sculpture, the, the sculptures that are out there? And nobody knows who painted those sculptures. In the little life history I sent you, okay, on the time of it tries to explain this. Maybe not very well, but I tried to explain it. So all those statues, we don't know who painted those, okay? The artisans were here in 1797 for two years. And when they left, Modesto, being a Spaniard, I mean uh, Juan Santa Cruz, and his grandfather being a Spaniard, he still had the paint. And they left everything with him because they were hoping that others, you know, let me just back up a little bit. There are other Catholic churches in this area where the artisans came in and painted two or three, not like here, but there's dozens out there, murals and, and paintings, you know. And then when they left, they left the paint with the indigent people, and then they would then they would paint lines or they would paint circles or whatever on the walls of the church of the main cathedral. That was a common practice. And because Juan Santa Cruz was Spanish, and he was pure blood Spanish, both his mother and father were Spanish from Spain. Okay, according to family history now, not Adamasia, the paints were left with him, and he was allowed to paint otherwise. So 20, 30 years ago, when I was doing all this research. I had Father Kieran McCarthy and another Catholic priest who knew artwork. They were art appraiser type guys. Uh, Father McCarthy was actually the, the, the main historian record keeper for all of the Catholic Church in this whole diocese. And I stood right here with him, and he was right here, and he pointed to this and said, this is probably the painting that Juan did after the artisans left with their wives and children. And so that's why this is perhaps not as perfectly done as the artisans that came up from Mexico City and did the ones out there. So our family believes that he did help out there 
and that he did this one. And of course he ran, he ran out of paint before he got there. Juan probably did the corners, okay? Then the Catholics told me that there was another, there's another one that's not as professional as this. This is not as professionally done as the main cathedral is. There's another one that's not as professionally done as this one that maybe another princess did or maybe Juan did first before he did this. And that's the choir loft. When you came all the way to the front when they were married, you turn around and look. You see the choir loft with the blue, you know, with the two angels, one of them reaching out. You come in right there. And we don't know. That one is doubtful whether Sam painted that one or not. I mean, whether Juan painted that one or not. We're very secure thinking that Juan painted this. We know he helped paint that there, because Adam actually told us twice he helped paint the faces and the figures of the saints. And as she was getting married, she looked and said, my grandfather helped paint this. Okay? And so, you may want to go back around. Actually, it's hard to it to a lot faster if you won't let us. But you could go back around and then just enjoy the church for a minute and then look around and look back and see the painting. It used to be called the choir loft. Ask if we go up there. I told you in my little life history that they wouldn't let me go up there 20 years ago they wouldn't let me go up there. And I just asked if he would let me go up there again and he said no one can go up there. So all you can do is look if you've come all the way up to, all the, way up to the altar and turn around, you can see that big, beautiful painting on the choir loft at the back of the church, right above the main door, where some of that came in. Okay? This is probably Juan Santa Cruz, which would be, some of you are, what, she's probably 12 or, 12 or 13 generations. She's probably 13 generations from Juan Santa Cruz. So her 12th great-grandfather mm -hmm. painted this right here. So, this is it right here, you want to take your pictures, and this has not been restored. This is, this is kind of faded like Adam Ash has, has said it was. Now, a couple of years ago, they began to restore all of the main articles out there, and I just asked the guy, and he said that the main chapel paintings have all been restored. They brought in some artisans, and they showed them how to use uh, toothbrushes and Q-tips and clean off the paint without uh, ruining the paint. So, this is probably brighter paint that Adam Ash saw. Adam Ash saw it when it was kind of dull like this, all the paintings that were out there that Juan helped paint. Okay? So you will see them a little bit brighter today than, than Adam Ash did, except for the one in the choir loft. And the guy said that they have not been able to restore the choir loft paint. And we don't know if that's him or not, okay? whether that was Juan's or not. But you can look back there and see that painting in the back. Okay? So this is Juan. And that's one out there who had to pick the main, the main saints. And then I can't get you in there because I'm not a Catholic priest here. If you've got the book on Sandvir, it shows the door of one of the artisans that put Pedro, San, uh, Pedro Borges. He carved it in the wood. And if I can find a priest, I can let you in over there. Okay? They won't let us in there because this is, this is semi-tourist. That's all tourist. But where that is, is really churchy stuff, okay? And we, have a picture, we have a picture in that Borges book that uh, uh, Henry Borges famous to see. A picture of that door with the engraving is in that. I'll have it tonight and see it. Or in the little, in the little uh, gift shop you can buy it. It'll show you a picture in there. But yes, know about that is, is Armando and, and uh, Juan and, and, and uh, uh, Almada and I, and James, uh, Jim, uh, what's his last name, the professor uh, at U of A, we tried for many, many years to try to find out who that Pedro Bojorquez was. Because Adam Ash's grandmother was Manuela Bojorquez, her grandmother. And so we thought maybe it was the Bojorquez that came up from Spain in 1797 and did this painting and stayed, because that happens sometimes. Okay? But we were able to find the families going back and back and back. So they, they did not come in, okay? So that Pedro Bojorquez is not ours. He was, we have no Pedro Bojorquezes, neither do the Bojorquez family have any Pedro Bojorquezes in 1797. And the guy put his name in there and the date. And so he was the guy that came up with the artisans. He was probably an artisan, helped build, remember the artisans had to build doors. They didn't 
know how to build doors. So he probably built the doors to this place, including that door. And that's why you can't go there because it's an original, it's an original, original door. Okay? But if I can get in over there, I can show that to you. If you ever come back here on your own, a large group of people will say, if you come back here on your own sometime and get a Catholic priest, they really give you the, the first class treatment. Especially what you say, my 11th great grandfather was Juan Santa Cruz, and we think maybe he painted this. And Adam Ash said, immediately, you are royalty. <laughs> they will shuffle you around all over the place. And back at, back at Tuma, Tuma Parker, we, we found Adam Ash's name twice in two different books while I was back there. I just looked at the index. So Adam Ash is all over the place. She's kind of a movie star. She was the movie star to them, like my grandma and others of you are movie stars to us. Okay? So you probably won't get back in here again. This is the, this is the painting. Take a good look. Bring your kids and your grandkids and your great grandkids. Okay? And then just go back out to the chapel and just enjoy the chapel. It's a beautiful place. And look at the paintings. Juan helped paint them. And he said, particularly the faces and the images of the saints. That's a quote. That's Juan helped paint. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Okay, let's go on out now. I'm doing fine. How are you doing, Chuck? Doing well. Good. Just get another one. You're all fine. I'm sorry. Christina. Very good. Hey, Mary. Hey, Mary. Hey, Check. He's done. He's coming. He's done. I want to point out, go. I want to point out that door right over there. This is the courtyard. And that room right there with Dr. Kiernan McCarty's. Uh, library and his office and that is where he helped me find our Bohorquez line. That is where the Bohorquez line was found that you see on the pedigree chart. In that office right there, three different visits. He would find stuff, I would come back, he'd share, he'd find stuff, I'd come back, he'd share. That's where the Bohorquez line came from, right there. That's where we got the information from the Catholic Church.
We are standing at the Sandivir Mission, and that's the little hill next to the Sandivir Mission. Ananasha said that they, uh, when she was a very young child, 9, 10, 11 years old, that would have been in about 1858, 1859, that the Catholic priest would take them up that little path right there. Those lions obviously were not there then. Would take them up that little path. And she remembered very distinctly how she would get dressed in the, in, in the little, the white, the white uh, manta type material that was so common here and so common in Mexico. And how they would take some of the flowers off of some of the, some of the cactus and they would carry uh, signs or banners. It was only little girls. There was no little boys and no men or women. It was only the little girls. And they would go up and they would go up to the top of there. Uh, to uh, as a, a dedication for that uh, particular uh, saint's day. It's in the life history, whatever the saint's day is. And that's the hill that Adam Asher walked up in 1858, from say 1854 to about 1858. That's the hill that she walked up right there as a, as a little girl and uh, in celebration of the, of, of the Catholic rites. And that's one reason why, because her grandfather helped paint the murals in here, and she was so involved with the Catholic rites, that's why throughout her life she was an extremely devout Catholic, and even at her death she chose to be married, not next to, buried not next to Sam, but to be buried in the Catholic cemetery. Catholic Catholicism was everything to Adonasia, and that's the hill she walked up right there. Thank you. 